tutorial one, here we go. So you should have in your Windows Explorer window here, or on your Mac, you should be able to see all of the individual files that compose each shapefile, meaning you've unzipped them. We've got three, we've got a conserved lands file, a county file, and a main township file. Uh, we also have this TIFF file here, and there are a lot of files that are associated with it, but this is all we actually need, this .tif. Um, the GIS program doesn't need anything besides that to run. So let's go ahead and open up QGIS. And as we go along here, uh, don't be shy to pause and go back and that kind of thing, because it might go a little fast, but it's because we have a lot of material. So if you didn't get something, pause and, and rewind. So I'm going to drag and drop my main land cover data set into the program, into the map canvas area. And if I ask you to describe this data set, what would you say? You can go ahead and zoom in. You say, okay, yep, it's raster for sure. The icon says that, and I can see the pixels. I grab the identify tool and click around a little bit, and okay. Down here it says there's one band, which means there's just one value at every location in this raster data set. It looks like if we click around, those values are whole numbers and they represent uh, categories. So what would you call this? I'm going to go ahead and say this is a, um, a nominal raster data set that is using integer values kind of as a name. So the data type right, would be integer. The kind of data would be nominal, it's qualitative data. And the format is a TIFF, and the data model is raster. So if any of that that I just said didn't make any sense, maybe go back and check out the earlier videos. But what's the goal? The goal here is we've got um, all these types of land cover. I wanted to look at just wetlands and how many acres of wetlands are in each town in Lincoln County. So that shouldn't be that hard a, um, a question to answer, but it's going to take a few steps. So I guess the other thing I would need to start solving this problem is my county shape file. So I'll go ahead and drag the county shape file in. Okay, we know that this is Lincoln County. Um, shape file, unlike the raster file, has an attribute table. And this attribute table, if we open that up, of course, we see, oh wow, look at all these, these records. These are all different records. And these, are, these fields here are all different attributes. And unlike the raster, which our raster of course was all integer values um, and there was only one attribute for each pixel, we now have all of these different objects. And all of these objects ha can have multiple um, attributes and all those attributes can be different um, data types um, and different kinds of things, right? This, for instance, is a yes, no, kind of a Boolean, what we'd say is a Boolean um, field that says, is it land or is it not land? Is it an island? Is it not an island, right? Shape area here, this is a real data type um, and it's probably calculated in either square meters or square feet you might say, well, that's really small. Maybe it's square miles. Um, but what you'll notice is that in the county file, we don't have that. There aren't this many Washington counties, right? So why do we have all these redundant kind of records? I thought there was just one Washington County. Well, there is. Um, but what we're looking at is actually different features like islands and small little pockets. Um, that all belong to one county. So if I was to use my select tool and just click Lincoln County here, right? Very cool, I've selected Lincoln County. I'm gonna go into the county attribute table and up here I can, uh, you know, I can organize it alphabetically like that. I'm gonna scroll down and look at Lincoln for a second. There's Lincoln. And there's, oh, there it was right there. So it appears that, yeah, this is, see, look at how big the shape area is here. This is the biggest piece of Lincoln County, but there are all these other little tiny pieces, right? Like that right there, Rutherford Island, 
Let's check that out. That should also be in Lincoln County. Um, and so it is. That's another piece of Lincoln County, completely different record. So if I wanted to select just Lincoln County, because that's all I care about, how would I go about doing that? Do I have to shift click everything and just click and click and no, that's going to take forever. So how do I do it, right? Um, you can use select features by polygon or freehand. You can draw these kind of circles like this if you want, and that will that will kind of group together a bunch of objects. Oh, but I missed a few, right? So there's got to be a better way to select everything that belongs to Lincoln County, all of the shapes, all the features. Well, there is. I'm going to deselect everything. And I'm going to go back into my attribute table up here. And just kind of take a look at it for a second and, and just think to myself, what if I could select everything where county equals Lincoln? Well, I like that idea. So what I'm going to do is say I want to select these records by an expression, using an expression. So I click this guy here, and up pops a new window, and you're getting very tired of all the new windows you have to learn, but this is your friend. This is going to be a great one. And if your window looks like this with only two kind of columns or two areas, uh, go ahead and drag this one out because um, this little help menu is going to be really, really useful. So what we want to do is we, we're trying to select by a field and value. And what we want to do is say, yep, we want our county, double click, to equal I could type in Lincoln, but there's a special way you have to write it. So for now, I'm going to say, what are all the unique values of county? It's not going to list the entire attribute table, but only every county once because if they're redundant. It doesn't need to write Washington that many times, only once. And I say, where county equals, double click Lincoln. I say select. And I'm going to close this, close that, and voila, there it is. So. In order to isolate Lincoln County, I've selected it, and I'd like to make a new shapefile, my own shapefile, so that I can say I only need Lincoln County. That's all I care about. I don't need the rest of the state. So I'm going to right-click my file over here, my uh, kind of my layer, I should say, and I'm going to say Save As. So, so far we've used Properties and Open Attribute Table, and now I'm going to say this is a new thing we care about, saving saving files. So I say save as and I get a new window that comes up and yep it's going to be an Esri shape file that's fine. I'm going to save it as Lincoln underscore county. Now remember don't ever use spaces in the uh, you know in the name. So Lincoln County save. We're not going to worry about this. This is fine. It's just taking the coordinate system of its parent file. And we're in week five. We're going to start talking more and more about um, projections and things like that. But for now, it's fine. Um, we only want to save the selected features. We don't want, if we don't click this, we're going to get another file that's exactly the same as our county file. But if we say save only selected features, we're going to get a file that's just Lincoln County. So all of that's fine. I say OK. And presto, there's our new shape file. I'm going to remove the county file now. It's going to ask me, are you sure? I say yes. And that's pretty cool. That's great. Now, I'd like to do the same thing with the raster data set because I don't need the entire state of Maine. I think this is a lot of data. So I want to kind of clip out from this raster data set, only the parts that are um, kind of that pertain to Lincoln County. So as you might have guessed, I'm going to use a tool, and that tool is called Clipper. And I go up to raster up here in my toolbar. I'm going to go down to extraction and use the clipper tool. Now this uh, you know this tool is going to take a while to run, but just be aware that when you click go, um, because it's a lot of data, it might take a while, but that's okay. So input file is the main land cover data set. The output file, I'm going to call the output file um, 
Lincoln underscore LC for land cover. And make sure that this pathway is correct, right? This is called a UNC, I hope you can remember. Um, and that pathway is going right to my desktop, into my tutorial one folder, and that's great. So Lincoln underscore LC, it's going to be a GeoTIFF. There are other choices, but we don't want those. We're going to work with GeoTIFFs as much as possible. So I say save, and it says OK. Yep, input, blah, blah, blah. Now, if I just said extent, and that was how it was going to clip it, all it would do in this case is take the extent that we currently are viewing and clip off, you know, Arusta County and the little tip down by Kittery there. But I, I'm, I have a mask layer, right? I don't need to, I'm not going to clip by extent. I'm going to clip by a mask. My mask, of course, is Lincoln County. So that's great. I don't have any other choices here. So that's, that's fine. I uh, don't need to click, uh, don't click that one. Um, and do I want it to load into the canvas when finished? Yeah, that would be nice. So after the tool runs, it's going to automatically drop the new Lincoln County land cover data set into, um, into the canvas. So let's hit go and it'll take a while. So I'll see you on the other side. All right. So you should get processing complete. And that means that, um, your tool has finished running. There it is, and you might say, hmm, what is all this white around it, right? Um, well, that's kind of the minimum extent. A raster always has to have um, a number of rows and a number of columns. It's not an object, remember, it's kind of, um, it's just a field of values. And so if we shut off the, the mainland cover data set and just look at the Lincoln one more closely, you might say, aha, well, there we go. Now it's only Lincoln County and the, the box around it is gone. Well, it's not true because the background values are just colored white. So if we grab our identify tool and zoom in here, you might see over here, oh, there's nothing, right? There's nothing over there. But the closer we get, aha, we see band one has a value of zero, right? So everywhere that has no data is valued zero. All right, the last tool I want to run um, is we want to isolate um, the wetlands. So I want to do this analysis in vector. I'd like to vectorize all of these polygons so that this would be a polygon where um, it would have a value of 10 and it would be its own object. So I want to change this raster into a bunch of objects um, so that we just get a ton of polygons. And that way we can select all of the wetlands and kind of move forward with our analysis where we have just wetlands. Um, so to do that, I'm going to use a tool, a conversion tool, and I go up here to raster again. And my conversion tool is going to be, I want to go from raster to vector. So it's called polygonize, which is a very silly, weird word. But I'm going to say polygonize. I'm going to take my, aha, that's the wrong one, right? I want to do the entire state of Maine. I'm going to take my new Lincoln underscore land cover LC, and I'm going to take that raster, that TIFF file, and select um, a new place for it here. Yep, I'm going to call this Lincoln land cover. And I'm going to give it the same name just because we know that the TIFF is going to have a different icon than the shape file. So say save. And I don't need to choose a field name because um, there's only one value per location. So there's only one value that it can be anyway. Load into Canvas when done. No mask. I just want it to do everything. It's going to be fine. I say OK. I'll see you on the other side. All right. That one finished. And you should have your, um, your polygon, your vector file has just kind of popped up here. I'm going to close all this stuff. And check it out. You've just done your second tool, your second geo processing tool. Um, it's actually a conversion tool, but very cool. And now you can open up this attribute table and you might see, voila. And you're like, what do these mean? All these numbers. Well, those are the land cover classifications. Head on to the next tutorial video and we will play some more. Okay, thanks.